Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. Brian Sussman here, filling in for Dr. Michael Savage. Dr. Savage is not in the house today. I'm filling in from KSFO in San Francisco. I had Dr. Savage on my morning program at KSFO earlier today. You'll be hearing some of that a little bit later in this program. It's just a shame there's nothing to talk about today. Nothing at all to talk about. Uh, You want to know all the great headlines? Go to michaelsavage.com. That's the home of the Savage Nation, borders, language, culture. Of course, Michael Savage began his radio career 21 years ago in San Francisco. I've been listening to him ever since then. And listen to his show every afternoon as it's broadcast live in San Francisco, 12 12 to 3 o'clock Pacific. But look at some of the headlines. Ted Cruz goes off on Republican leaders calling McConnell a liar. Who's McConnell? The head of the Senate. Who's Ted Cruz, a senator from Texas? Who also is Ted Cruz? He's the only candidate for president who has not piled on Donald Trump. Have you noticed that? Everyone else is throwing stones, for the most part, everyone else is throwing stones and calling for him to remove himself from the, uh, from the process. But can I tell you something? Donald Trump has struck a nerve, touched a nerve big time. Now, I'm broadcasting from San Francisco. We had on July 1st the terrible murder of Kate Steinle. Everybody's aware of that by now. It happened in broad daylight in a very touristy part of town. It was in a part of town. Guys, I'm getting mixed minus if you could just take care of that for me. So I'm hearing myself after I talk. There we go. Thank you. So the bottom line is Ted Cruz goes off on, 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 um, on McConnell. Everyone's piling on to Trump. Trump has touched a nerve, and that would be immigration. And now we have the Congress. The Congress, Mitch McConnell, of course, has the Senate. We have John Boehner with the House of Representatives. Finally, they're beginning to talk about sanctuary cities, as if sanctuary cities haven't existed for years. San Francisco was one of the first sanctuary cities. This guy... This scumbag that murders Kate Steinle. Beautiful girl. This guy, how many times was he arrested? Six times, a felon. Deported to Mexico, what, at least a handful of times. Comes back into the country, picks San Francisco because it's a sanctuary city to hide out, stay on the down low, and kills this girl. There's a lot to this story we don't know, but we do know this. Sanctuary city policies have been killing people in this country for years. And suddenly now... You get members of Congress acting like, oh, we've got to do something about this. Well, guess what? Years late and many lives short. John Boehner finally talking tough on this issue. Where have you been, John? You know, there was a time when the Congress was completely run by Republicans and there was a Republican in the White House. You guys could have done something big time about this then, but you did not. It takes murders and rapes and killings on the roadway to finally get your attention. You're all disgusting. But here's Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is the only guy that hasn't piled on to Donald Trump. Now, this is quite amazing, isn't it? Ted Cruz doesn't pile on. He says, no, I want to talk about the issues of the day. Well, let me tell you something. The issues of the day are immigration. And Donald Trump knows he's got his finger on the pulse of this one. And the GOP flatly rejecting him as a kook. You know, say what you want about the Donald. A lot of bravado, a lot of ego. I get that. But what the people find refreshing, and again, on on all the issues, I don't know if I would agree with him or not, but I do like this. I like a guy who stands in front of the cameras and gives it right back to the media. I like a guy who won't apologize when he's pushed into a corner by the media and forced to otherwise. Like this Martin O'Malley guy. 
the, the Maryland governor who's running as a Democrat, all he said was black lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Microaggression didn't mean to offend anybody. What? What a bunch of petty wastes. What a bunch of wimps in that party. And we've got them in our, in the, on the Republican side of the aisle as well. Trump's not one of those. He's got his finger on the pulse of an issue that's quite frankly scaring not just conservatives, but liberals as well, if they're willing to admit it. We're all scared. I mean, my gosh, I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. You live in your various uh, cities around the United States. There are pockets of the San Francisco Bay Area. I just won't go. I will literally, I'm thinking of one particular, uh, one particular place on what's known as the peninsula in the San Francisco Bay Area. And to get from point A to point B, I could drive through a major thoroughfare, or I could go around that particular neighborhood. And in, at night, I will never go through the fast route. I'll always go around and take the long route. And in the daytime, I'll do it as well, because I feel like I'm in a third world. I'm not comfortable in my own neighborhood, the greater Bay Area. You've got pockets like that where you live. Listen, the Donald's on to something here. He's on to something big time. I want, to, want you to hear Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is on the Senate floor and accuses the, the Speaker of the Senate, the House leader, the, the, the Senate leader, I should say, Mitch McConnell, accuses him of, of lying on the Senate floor and actually says he can't be trusted. This is clip six. Take a listen. You know, it was striking a minute ago seeing the Democratic leader, Senator Harry Reid, calling out the majority leader for filling the tree, for engaging in the same procedural abuse that Harry Reid did over and over and over again in this body. Now the Republican leader is behaving like the senior senator from Nevada. Now that was Ted Cruz on the Senate floor. Guys, I'm just I'm going to talk to the production team. I, I couldn't hear uh, the senator speaking. So whatever you need to do. OK, thank you. Thank you. I just looked at the clock knowing it was a 22-second piece and figured I jumped in about the right time. But the, did you hear what Ted Cruz had to say there? I've got the transcript right in front of me. He said that it saddens him to say this, saddens him to say this, that his own leader is busy telling flat-out lies. See, I have a friend who's, we all have our friends who work for the government. I've got a wonderful buddy of mine, one of my best friends from high school. Uh, became a Navy Top Gun pilot and has been in the military ever since. And and this is a, a, a very reputable guy. He is no longer active duty. He's in the reserves. He also works for another government agency, which allows him to go back into service whenever he needs to be because he's a pretty high-ranking guy. But when you have a friend like this who has served our country so well at such a high level, Tell you, Brian, when their lips are moving, they're lying to you. You know you got a problem. When their lips are moving, they're lying to us. It's, it's, it's like this on so many levels. With the sanctuary city, oh, they're talking big time. They're going to fix it. Oh, we're going we're gonna to pass a bill. They pass a bill. You know that bill's not going to go anywhere in the Senate. And you know even if it did go somewhere in the Senate, it's not going to be signed by Barack Obama. So much for the sanctuary cities. And you get these liberals saying, no, these sanctuary city laws are very good. It's, it's helping people in the shadows, helping them in the shadows so they'll be able to report crime. Don't you understand? If they don't have the sanctuary status, uh, then they're not going to be reporting the crimes because they're fearful of being deported themselves. And when they're being robbed and when they're being murdered and when they're being raped, they need to be able to report these crimes safely. Come on. This is craziness. Then you get Hillary Clinton out there. Oh, she's talking to Planned Parenthood. Oh, this is part of the right-wing conspiracy she's implying. These edited videotapes. Move away. Nothing here to see. Move along, kids. Give me a break. Well, why does she say that? Because she is the poster child for Planned Parenthood. She won their largest award. Go to michaelsavage.com. You'll see it for yourself. She won their largest, biggest award you could possibly, the Margaret Sanger Award last year. Mar Margaret Sanger, a, a eugenics proponent. I, I love the headline at michaelsavage.com. It's from the Michael Savage newsletter. Planned Parenthood is the descendant of Hitler's Third Reich. It's all true. These people are crazy. And Hillary's out there. No, this is edited video. Go. Planned Parenthood does a wonderful job. 
helping women in their struggles, helping women with health choices. Well, what about the the baby women, the preborn women? What about them? Because of Planned Parenthood, the womb is one of the most dangerous places in America. So we'll talk about that with Brian Sussman filling in here on Michael Savage's show. Oh, Obama's Obama's going to Africa. I guess, is he actually in Africa? Is that the deal? He's actually there? I love that. I love the billboard. This is too much. The Kenyan birthers are coming out of the woodwork. There are billboards all over Kenya. The home of President Barack Obama. You can't make this stuff up. It's too good. The home of Barack. But look at this is interesting. Look at the list of characters that are going with Obama to Africa. You got 19 Democrats and one Republican. All of the taxpayer dollar, of course. This is costing us millions and millions and millions of dollars. And, of course, they're living in the lap of luxury when they go down there. So the group, uh, we got three senators, and the rest are all House members, and all the House members are members of the Congressional Black Caucus. Of the three senators, you have uh, two Democrats, one Republican. The Republican is Senator Jeff Flake of Arizona. What an absolute disappointment this guy's been for you folks in arizona you know what i'm talking about this guy becomes a member of the house of representatives in 2000 and promises the people of arizona he's only going to run for three terms oh well as soon as the three three terms are over oh i've got to run for a fourth and then of course he becomes a u.s senator he's elected in 2013 and he he gets the tea party backing and no sooner does he become a senator, and he's the furthest thing from a Tea Party member. Again, these types are everything that's wrong with politics in America today. And that's why guys like Donald Trump and Carly Fiorino, as well as Ben Carson, you see they're the anti-politicians. And I think the GOP needs to get a grip and start listening to what they have to say and why their messages are resonating with the people. Brian Sussman filling in. On the Michael Savage Show. By the way, our phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Savage Nation, Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. By the way, you can still get Countdown to Mecca. Go to michaelsavage.com. Then Savage has another book coming out in October. This guy's just a prolific writer. When he's not behind the mic, he's writing. This is called Government Zero. Government Zero. And as Savage describes it to me, he's sounding the alarm about how progressives and radical Islamists are working towards a similar end to destroy Western civilization and then remake our civilization in their own respective images. It's going to be a good book. Go to michaelsavage.com. When you're at michaelsavage.com, you'll also notice a headline. It's near the top of the page. Muslim hate prof attacks Jews, women's, women and gays, and yet keeps his job. This is, this is an amazing story. So this is a tenured university professor, professor in Pennsylvania. He's at Lincoln University. It's just outside of Philly. This is a guy who previously questioned the Holocaust and has previously called for Israel's destruction. He's a professor at Lincoln University. And now he's under fire again for remarks about Jews and women and gays. His name, name is Kakab Sadiqi. Kakab Sadiqi, English professor. So uh, he was talking on Facebook about Bill Cosby and these 37 women who have accused Cosby of various sexual things. And he was asked, well, why did it take so long for these women to come forward? And his response was, many women are sluts. In another post on Facebook, 
He attributed the Supreme Court's decision to legalize same-sex marriage on, quote, Obama's homo uprising. Then there was a third post referring to dirty Zionist Jewish white supremacist thugs. Now, again, he's an English teacher at Lincoln University. It's rather interesting because in the story that I'm reading here, it's an Associated Press story, of course, they would never, ever mention that he's Muslim. No, they would never do that. But, oh, my God, if the guy claimed to be a Christian and said similar things, they'd be all over that. If he were just your basic average white guy, oh, they'd be all over that as well. God forbid if he owned a Confederate flag. Isn't it interesting? Never. I'm looking at the story. I'm trying to. Nothing here about. Nothing here about him being a Muslim. But looking at his name and looking at his photographs and blah, 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 blah. There you go. Oh, am I profiling? Forgive me. Not. So how does he get away with this? Lincoln University condemns his remarks, but says it doesn't plan on taking action against him. Well, we couldn't do that because. He's a Muslim man, and we don't want to get the Muslims upset at all. Don't want to look like we're phobic in any way, shape, or form. So this is another story that we're talking about on the Savage Nation. The phone number is 855-400-SAVAGE. Now, coming up on the program, again, Brian Sussman here. Uh, 7.35 this morning, I received a call. Actually, the producer of my program uh, received a call, said, hey, Michael wants to come on at 8.05. You guys want to take him? Well, of course we want to take Michael. We always love the house call. So a little bit later in this program, we will play for you our house call from Michael Savage. Uh, he calls in every once in a while. Can I tell you this? They're always hilarious calls. Two things happen. One, he gets your blood boiling, right? And then he causes you just to bust a gut laughing. So you're going to hear that again coming up in the next hour. Uh, just a few minutes from now, I welcome your calls, and we'll take a bunch of 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-7282. Don't forget michaelsavage.com for all the latest news. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Great to be on the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. 855-400-SAVAGE, michaelsavage.com. One of my greatest joys of getting behind this microphone is speaking to members of the Savage Nation from all over the country. It really is the highlight of each opportunity I have to get behind this microphone. So let's begin. I'm out here on the left coast, so let's go to the right coast. This is Ralph, W-A-B-C. Ralph, I think you're going to say something here that resonates with a lot of folks. Go ahead, talk to us about Donald Trump, and thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Well, Brian, you know, it's really something how that personality is such that I would ordinarily disdain the guy. I used to, I used to despise the guy. But because he struck this, this nerve and because he won't walk back some of the uh, statements that he's made that are very cutting and very to the point and uh, a little bit too hard-hitting for the present-day uh, America <laughs> here, I'm taking a liking to a guy I used to despise. And, uh, you know, I despise him because of his pomposity, his wealth. He throws it in his... Not because he has the wealth, because he throws it in your face. But you know something? There's something about what he's saying which is resonating, like you mentioned, Brian. And the, the, the thing that he will not do, which I admire greatly, he won't apologize. No matter what they do to him, I, what forum he's, he's, he's under there, no matter who, whomever it is that, that, that are, that's interviewing him at the time, and you would think that he would break and uh, say, well, and rephrase and apologize, <laughs> but fine, he hasn't done it yet. And that's he doesn't. A wonderful trait. Now, Ralph, is he? Where is he from in New York? Is he a Long Island guy? You know, you're you're speaking to me from WABC, the New York area. Where is he from exactly? I think he was born in Queens, 
And, okay. um, and, and in New York here, you know, it's funny how times change, because in New York here, he was looked upon as a big bully, a brat, <laughs> a guy who you just disdained, like I had mentioned before, for all mm-hmm. those reasons. But now I hear, you know, he's flying high in there around the country, which <laughs> you wouldn't think a guy from New York with that kind of an attitude can fly so high in the Midwest. Uh, out yeah, in it's amazing. And I wonder... How much of that is because of his television persona, because he is a TV star in his own right? Or, well, that's that's got to be a sliver of it, but like you just said, Ralph, he doesn't back down. We all yell at our television sets when, when the media uh, does what they do. He's going after the media the way we personally would like to. And on this Im- issue of immigration, let's be realistic. We all, to some measure or another, feel a bit unsafe at times, and he's tapped into that. Ralph, thanks for your call. I really appreciate it on the Savage Nation. Let's continue. We go from New York to the Washington, D.C. area, WMAL. This is Donna. Donna, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in on this Friday. Hi. You're so welcome. It's such a pleasure to be able to speak with you. Um, you know, I don't know if I agree with Ted Cruz on a lot of things with how he's voted. And I defer to the conservative review because it gives you a lot of information on people, Mm -hmm. which is very helpful. That being said, I am so pleased to hear that someone else is standing up for what is right, and that's what we need with our conservative candidates and, uh, you know, basically all of our Republican candidates. They need to start standing up on principle, and that's why... I found it remarkable that Ted Cruz said what he said, and I'm so pleased that uh, Donald Trump is being the voice for the majority of people in this country, Republican and Democrat alike. Donna, thanks for your call out of the Washington, D.C. area, WMAL. So here you go, folks. You're getting a lot of people from a lot of different quarters who like what Donald is saying. Again, Savage, I remember listening to Savage on KSFO in San Francisco in the uh, in the early 90s when he just started out. In fact, I used to listen to him on this other station uh, that where he literally launched his career. They, they gave him his first shot in radio. I remember listening to it thinking, who is this guy? And he's spot on. It was, he was all about borders, language, and culture. Listen, this should be something. This is a topic that should reach to all quarters of society in America. All Americans, all citizens, all people who love this country, doesn't matter what your political stripe, if you love this country, you should be concerned about our border and the maintenance of our language and our culture, the ethos of America. But see, when Barack Obama said he was going to fundamentally transform this country, he meant it. He wasn't screwing around. Border, blow it away. Language, screw it. English doesn't need to be the superior language. Culture, culture. He wants a multi-ethnic culture. So we go from New York, first caller, second caller, Washington, D.C., third caller, let's go down south, Alabama, WVNN. Barbara, Barbara, thanks for joining us as a part of the Savage Nation. Sussman filling in. Go ahead. Well, I'm um, also, well, I've come from up north, but I'm down in the south, and I'm also for Donald Trump. Uh, I like also Ted Cruz, too, very much. I think that our um, senators uh, there in the, in the Congress, they've let us down quite a bit. I've been over in Saudi Arabia, my husband and I, for over close to 10 years. I don't know why. We've had two presidents, Re- President Reagan, and I haven't heard much of it, but uh, President uh, John Kennedy, who both have dealt with superpowers with Russia, and we were mm-hmm. a superpower. And I'm sure you realize with, Ke- with uh, President Kennedy, uh, it was a mu- missile Cuban crisis, and he basically said, turn those ships around or you'll be dealing with the United States of America. And they did. Russia did turn them around. Why are we handling, uh, basically, the con- uh, not Congress, the um, senators and that, well, and Washington uh, handling with uh, a third-world country? Barbara, you're right. We are kowtowing to a third-world country that's on its way to getting a nuclear weapon. You're spot on. I appreciate you calling the Savage Nation. You know, Barack Obama was patting himself on the back, talking about these negotiations put forth by John Kerry. I mean, what a joke that is. Just look at this guy's entire life. It's a joke. His service in Vietnam, we all know about that. 
It was a disservice. After that, he becomes the chief uh, anti-war protester. And uh, the, 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 the absolute lies he told before Congress. Uh, they were wiring testicles like Genghis Khan or whatever he was saying. Now, you, you've probably heard that tape before. Yeah, this is John Kerry. John Kerry, the only way he knew how, knows how to make money is by marrying rich women. And uh, never really worked more than a day in his life. Oh, yeah, he was a district attorney. Okay, and he, I think he had a sandwich shop or something like that. But he's a playboy, a very wealthy playboy who got his money, as I mentioned, by marrying rich women. He likes to uh, do all the things that the, that the you know, he likes to dri- drive around on his bicycle, wearing clothing that makes him look like a praying mantis. Then he crashes the bicycle. And this is the guy in charge of dealing with these mullahs in this deal for nuclear weapons. And we kowtow to them. And Barack Obama pats himself on the back. Oh, we negotiated. Oh, we negotiated hard. Now, you know what a hard negotiation is? When you walk away from the negotiation like Reagan did in Reykjavik with Gorbachev. You know who else would do that same type of thing? Trump. Because that's his whole life is negotiations. And I'm sure when a negotiation doesn't work perfectly, he says, all right, see ya. Call me when you're ready to deal. That's the kind of leadership we need in the White House, who believes in American superiority, who believes that the Constitution means something, who believes in the American ethos. That's what we need. We can still be a melting pot. Hey, come here and be a part of the program. Be a part of the solution. Come here and be American. So now as we continue around the country in the Savage Nation, we go to Jack, KBOI in Idaho. Jack, thanks for calling us. Go right ahead. I would uh, vote for Donald Trump, I believe, at at least at this point. But I think this country has gotten to the point of no return just because of the cancer of the the progressive liberal mindset that's taken over this country, both Republican, uh, Democrat, and Independent. And, uh, you know, the general population, I just don't think, I don't see a way that we get out of this without having something major happen, because even if Donald Trump is elected, there's too much uh, cronyism in the government that I, I just don't see it happening, so... Well, Jack, I, I, de- I mean, I think there are many listeners. And by the way, thank you for calling. I, I've taken all these calls. I, I did not intend for these people. Every call you've heard so far has talked about Trump and how they like Trump. I wasn't expecting that from many of these callers. That wasn't my intention. I knew what they were going to talk about ahead of time, thanks to our great uh, producing team here on the Savage Nation. But, you know, there are, the, the Trump thing's just sort of popping out. Because, as I mentioned... Trump is identifying something that frightens all of us. Illegal immigration. We're not safe in our own backyards here in the San Francisco Bay Area. That's where it all came to a head with the murder of this beautiful Kate Steinle in broad daylight in a tourist area that I drive by every day. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton, she is the poster girl for Planned Parenthood. She won their biggest award last year, the Margaret Sanger Award. Margaret Sanger is the one who many, many years ago, uh, back in the day when she first founded Planned Parenthood, said she wanted to breed a race of thoroughbreds. That's one of her quotes. Breed a race of thoroughbreds. Margaret Sanger uh, believed in eugenics. Margaret Sanger. Let's go ahead and listen to Hillary Clinton here. She has been confronted on the fact that there are these videos of these leaders from Planned Parenthood who are talking about selling aborted body parts. This is ghoulish. This is gross. Some would even say this is demonic. Uh, She's pretending like, no, 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 pay attention. Pay no attention to those videos. They're edited. She's acting as as if this is some right-wing conspiracy. Listen to Hillary Clinton. This is a CBS News clip. Clip seven, please. I think it is unfortunate that Planned Parenthood has been the object of such a concerted attack um, for so many years. And it's really an attack against a woman's right to choose to make the most personal, difficult decisions. that any woman would face uh, based on her faith and her and the medical uh, advice that she's given. So I'm hoping that uh, this um, 
uh, situation will not further undermine the very important services that Planned Parenthood provides uh, across our country. The very important services that Planned Parenthood provides? Selling body parts? We need an investigation. Are we going to get an investigation? <laughs> Are you kidding me? From Obama's Department of... Oh, Obama's the guy who was speaking at a Planned Parenthood convention in, in recent years and said, God bless you, Planned Parenthood. God bless you. God bless them? Here's Nancy Pelosi. She's talking about an investigation. Of course, she's my congresswoman here in San Francisco. She's the former uh, She's the former House leader. Now she's the House minority leader. I love the sound of that. She wants an investigation, but she wants to investigate those filming Planned Parenthood. Take a listen to this, clip nine. And this is about uh, women's health. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Planned Parenthood has said that they have done nothing illegal. They did not ever charge, which would be illegal for fetal tissue that they've only used, only have uh, uh, defrayed the cost of mailing uh, uh, to so, uh, that to someone, which is, uh, which is not breaking the law. And it, I think that uh, I support what my colleagues are doing is to say, let's have, everybody's calling for an investigation. Of let's have an investigation. Shut of her those up. People I can't stand who, this. This is ridiculous. Uh, Shut her up, please. Good Lord. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi, you supporting Planned Parenthood, defending them, you're as ghoulish as they are. This is sickening. And, of course, now, finally, you get guys like John Boehner. Oh, we need, to, we need to defund them. Where have you been? We've been wanting to defund them forever. And they get something like close to $600 million a year in federal funds. Here's Ray calling out on the left coast from KSFO in San Francisco. Ray, line nine, go ahead, please. And I did call in about Planned Parenthood, but let me chime in. Uh, like you, um, I like Trump. He's a refreshing voice. He's forcing the conversation in a certain direction that the Democrats won't take it, and the Republicans are so scared to even tiptoe there. So it, it's, it's just very refreshing to see someone speak up and say the king has no clothes. So um, uh, that injected. Um, Michael had the scientist and meteorologist and known climate expert Al Sharpen clip that he played a day or two ago <laughs> Sharpen, uh, when Sharpen claimed that uh, carbon and other pollutants uh, were affecting the minority communities in a greater uh, manner than anyone else in society. And it's funny how the left always, they always want to point to how something is always affecting minorities or women more than anybody else. Read white man. But uh, that said, I, I, my question, Brian, do you think the left will be consistent and speak out about how Planned Parenthood has killed more minorities and females than carbon ever will, or SUVs, or handguns, or stars and bars flags? Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's the, their blindness or their hypocrisy is just amazing. Uh, I read a study, I read something, I can't remember it was on the Internet, that said, Currently, the black community represents, I hate that term, community, but they represent about 12 or 13 percent of the U.S. population. If Planned Parenthood, if Roe v. Wade hadn't been passed in 74, they would be at more like 36 percent of the American population. It's just been a crime, what has been committed. Absolutely. And these Planned Parenthood organizations are set up uh, in, they're set up, there are more Planned Parenthood operations in the minority communities than in, for example, the white communities. That's where they set up shop. Uh, this is an op This is genocide. This is basically. This, I don't know how else you describe it. It's ghoulish. It's genocide. You'd think the black quote unquote community would be speaking up. I know there are some voices out there, but certainly enough, and uh, not given the credibility they deserve. Ray, appreciate your call out of KSFO in San Francisco. More calls just around the corner. Next hour, by the way, on the Savage Nation. Uh, Dr. Savage made a house call to my program in San Francisco this morning. It's, it's pretty good. We will play that for you, of course. So glad you're here. Brian Sussman filling in on a Friday for Michael Savage. 855-400-SAVAGE. MichaelSavage.com. And don't forget the book Countdown to Mecca available there as well. Savage Nation.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Savage is not in the house today. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael. I host a program out on the left coast. In fact, Michael was a guest on my program this morning. As as he I, Listen, we love it when he makes a house call to his home station, KSFO, the station where he launched his career. And uh, I'll play that conversation for you a little bit later this hour. It was, well, hilarious on the one hand, but he did get our blood a boiling as he was talking about some of the issues of the day. So you'll hear that coming up. Uh, I'm watching the news. We've got all the big monitors here in the studio covering things for you, making sure nothing slips by. And and Hillary's out on the stump today, and she's praising Chipotle for boosting benefits for workers, and she's talking about her minimum wage increase. She wants to get up to 15 bucks an hour. <sighs> there are many of you who run businesses listening to the program. There are many of you who own businesses. Many of you are folks that really get it. You, you understand finances. It really doesn't take a lot between the ears to put things together. Minimum wage jobs are minimum wage jobs for a reason. They give you experience. They teach you a work ethic. My first job, just like your first job, was minimum wage. I didn't plan on making bank off that first job. It was my way of getting a first job, getting some experience, getting a resume item. And quite frankly, I believe that minimum wage should suck so much that it becomes your incentive for never wanting to take another job like that again. It's not something you're supposed to live on. Oh, but we've got to, you can't support a family on minimum wage. You're not supposed to. If you're trying to support a family on minimum wage, guess what? You shouldn't have a family. Either, and, guess, and if it's not enough for you, go out and work two jobs. I remember the old days. You'd have these dads out there working two, three jobs. They were responsible people. Maybe the minimum wage is the best they could get, but I'll tell you something. They were working two jobs. They were working weekends, seven days a week, whatever it took to support the family. So Hillary's out there, 15 bucks an hour. We just had Janet Napolitano. Remember her big, big sis? She used to run the Department of Homeland Security. That Janet Napolitano. Now she runs the University of California system here in California. She just unilaterally made the decision, oh, we're taking wages up to 15 bucks an hour. That's what we're doing on the UC. The University of California system is the third largest employer in the state of California. So now, minimum wage is going up to 15 bucks an hour. Where are you going to pay for this? How are you going to pay for this? You have to raise tuition. And, and, of course, you raise tuition, you're going to get the kids protesting, oh, my God, you can't raise tuition on me. This is my university. I'm a Californian. I want to go to these schools. So today we find out, she makes this pronouncement this week, and then today we find out that for the University of California system, the largest number of out-of-state students ever has just been accepted. Why? Because the out-of-state student pays $24,000 a year more than the in-state student. you got to pay for this somehow, so they're sticking it to those from out of state. That way they can say, no, we didn't raise tuition. No, we would never do that. Not for you children out there trying to go to school. We wouldn't want to burden you with higher uh, student loans and that burden when you get out of school. So what they're doing is letting more kids from out of state into the University of California system. Let them subsidize it. This is nuts. Anybody who's ever owned a business, I've owned several. I've had a lot of people under my employment. I understand how it works. And if there was a mandatory minimum wage increase, here's how I would deal with it. I First and foremost, the last thing I'd want to do is raise the price of my services or my product. I'd probably first start saying, okay, <clears throat> who can we lay off? 
Do we have some dead weight here? Can we cut back hours? What can we do? Because labor is your most, your, your largest cost. It's just amazing. So now Hillary's out there. Listen to this. By the way, we're at 855-400-SAVAGE. Hillary Clinton could be facing criminal, could be facing a criminal investigation into whether she mishandled sensitive government in, information on her private server. You know, the little private homebrew email server kept at Chappaqua. Two inspectors general have requested the Department of Justice launch such a probe. Now, do you think this is going to happen? Of course it won't, because it's Barack Obama's Department of Justice. This will never happen. And now you've got John Boehner out there saying, oh, I demand, we demand the server. I want to see the server. Boehner, where have you been? This all started back in March. You wanted the server. You should have gotten it back then. I've been told it's been scrubbed. This is unbelievable. These guys were all a day late and a dollar short. Boehner, you should have demanded when we first found out about this at the beginning of March, I want that server now. I mean, you even had ex-Obama aides like Robert Gibbs saying that the use of that server was, quote, highly unusual. Do you remember that? Where were you, Boehner, back then? Just like, where were you, Boehner, when you were in charge of the Congress lock, stock, and barrel with your boy McConnell and George Bush in office? You could have done something about sanctuary cities then. It takes the death of a young woman and Donald Trump out on the stump for you to wake up and smell the coffee. you got to wonder sometimes, honestly. You got to wonder, do they have pictures of John McConnell? Do they have pictures of him with another woman, with another guy? Do they have pictures uh, drunk on it? Do they have him dressed in drag somewhere? What do they got on Boehner? What do they have on all these people? I don't. Oh, we got to have that server. You could have had it a long time ago, but you moved too slow. Oh, we'll get her on Benghazi. You're not going to get her on Benghazi. Oh, we'll get her on. Come on, man. This See, this is the stuff that the Donald's just slicing right through. He's slicing right through all of this. And that's why his message is resonating with so many. So many. We want a tough talker. We want somebody who's not going to roll over and take it. Sick of this. And then you got this Iran deal. <laughs> this is just... Okay, we've got a few people speaking up. You've got this uh, Senator Reich. Is that how you pronounce his name? I think he's from Idaho. I'd never heard of him until he started talking about the fact that uh, the world has been, well, John Kerry, bamboozled. The world has been fooled. He's talking about this Iran deal. Clip 12, listen to this. All I can say is after reviewing this, even, even in a cursory fashion, anyone who believes this is a good deal really joins the ranks uh, of the most naive people on the face of the earth. When you're dealing with the people that we're dealing with here, with the history they have of cheating and everything else, uh, anyone who can say this is a good deal. I, I know the justification is, well, it's not perfect. Well, th the word perfect shouldn't even be used in a sentence with this agreement. It isn't even close to that. So that's Senator Reich. And, you know, the one w there's one senator, Republican senator, who was for this, Jeff Flake. I mentioned his name in the last hour. Jeff Flake, because he has been for this deal, he's like one of the few Republican senators for the deal. Guess how he was rewarded? Obama picks up the phone. Hey, Jeff, listen, really appreciate your support on the Iran deal. Come on to Africa. You ever been there? Come on. Come on our trip, man. We'll take good care of you. He's going on the Africa trip. He's the one Republican on the African trip. And I love the billboards in Kenya. Welcome home, Barack Obama. No, I'm serious. Jeff Flake's there. What a disappointment this is. You got to wonder, what kind of photos did they have on this guy? What kind of intel did he... He turned so easily and so quickly. Jeff, listen, you need to be a little more compliant or we will uh, let the cat out of the bag on the... <laughs> from a few years ago. Or something like that, right? Come on. John is checking in on WBOB. John, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. We were talking about minimum wage a few moments ago. Hillary's out there on the stump today saying, yeah, i got to have a $15 minimum wage. Go right ahead, please. Yeah, hey, Brian. Hey, I travel for work Monday through Thursday, and I listen to your morning show in San Francisco. So um, I'm back in the United States of America in Jacksonville, Florida, 
and I, it was a pleasure to hear you this afternoon. But yeah, right on. Thank hour. you. How did they How did they arrive at the fact that fifteen dollars an hour? You can't raise a family on nine dollars an hour. Where, where did they arrive at the numbers that fifteen dollars an hour you can raise a family? You <laughs> know, I hate to tell Hillary this, but fifteen dollars an hour stinks. You can't raise a family with that. You really can't do anything. I have a good job, and I make a salary, and it's a lot more than $15 an hour. And I just don't understand. The only thing $15 an hour is going to do is raise costs, and it's going to cut labor for the companies. Because yeah. they're, not going to, they're not going to take a hit in their pocketbook. The consumers are going to take the hit in the pocketbook. So it's fun. Okay, here's one. John, how about this? If $15 is better... Uh, then how about 25 bucks an hour? I mean, $25 now, you could probably do a little better job raising your family. Where does their logic end? It's illogical. That's the problem, John. Anyway, John, appreciate your call. Thank you for checking in. <laughs> it's, 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 it's maddening. Okay, here's another one for you. This is a guy who gets it. Sadly, he's across the pond. This is the British Prime Minister. Are you ready for this? He's talking about the root cause of Islamist terrorism. We are told time and time again, well, if these people just said jobs, no, it's global warming. That's what, you know, maybe it is global warming. I was thinking about this. And, and again, my background is meteorology. It's always been pretty darn hot in the Middle East. So if you're a guy, you wake up, you're wearing burlap underwear, it's 9 o'clock in the morning and it's already 110 degrees outside, that would make you angry. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe it really is global warming. Anyway, this is the British Prime Minister. He says, no, 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 no. Forget global warming. Forget poverty. This is an ideology. This is clip 17. Now, some argue it's because of historic injustices and recent wars or because of poverty and hardship. This argument, what I would call the grievance justification, must be challenged. So when people say... It's because of the involvement in the Iraq war that people are attacking the West. We should remind them that 9-11, the biggest loss of life of British citizens in a terrorist attack, happened before the Iraq war. Before the Iraq war. Uh, there have been a lot of things. You can just go back through time, hundreds and hundreds of years, and uh, these people have been agitated and been going nuts just look at the history books, folks. It's not because of global warming. It's not because of poverty. It's because of an ideology. An ideology. That's the British Prime Minister. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. MichaelSavage.com. By the way, Michael's got a new book coming out in October, Government Zero. We'll be talking about that. Take more of your calls. 855-400-SAVAGE. That's 855-400-7282. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. By the way, in oh, about 10 minutes or so, we're going to be hearing our conversation with Savage this morning. He called up my morning show in San Francisco, and it was lively. you got to hear it, and you will. This is something Barack Obama doesn't want you to hear. You've all heard by now about this Migration Policy Institute study on immigration in the United States and illegal immigration. They're a liberal think tank. Ooh, they let the cat out of the bag. I'm reading this at Breitbart right now. 820,000 illegal aliens in the United States with criminal convictions. 820,000 illegal aliens in the United States with criminal convictions, including 690,000 illegal aliens currently residing in the United States on U.S. soil who have been convicted of a felony or serious misdemeanor. Uh, we keep hearing that there are 11 million people that are illegally in this country, if almost a million of them are in the United States with criminal convictions, uh, that everything Trump is saying is spot on, and it's probably even worse than that in terms of the actual number of immigrants in this country. Th these are only the ones we know about. These are only the ones we know about. <sighs> ah, okay, so this is a pretty serious situation. Now, why, are Trump, why is Trump gaining so much, uh, why is he surging in the polls 
why is it that people like this guy in terms of where he stands on the issues? Well, this is the one issue on which he stands, and everyone knows where he is on this one. And he's talking like we all talk when, you know, we're in the privacy of our own home or with friends or whatever. This illegal immigration scares us. Let's go to Joe at WABC. Joe, quickly, please. Thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in. All right. Regarding minimum wages, now, uh, listen, uh, I'm an ardent supporter of uh, Donald Trump. That's number one. And um, my priority is illegal immigration. So regarding minimum wage, I have a problem vis-a-vis the uh, conservatives uh, because, in my judgment, if... uh, the minimum wage were, let's say, or is seven fifty an hour. It's du- doubled hypothetically to fifty. That means the purchasing power of those wage earners doubles as well, which means they will be able to buy more goods and services, and hence generate and boost the economy. But provided these jobs are given out to legal immigrants and American citizens first and foremost, and okay. as far appreciate as- your call on case on. Uh- on the Savage Nation. Uh, let me see here. Uh, here's let's talk to talk to me. Here's another. We had two Joes from WABC. That's but go to Joe on line five. Joe on line five, please. Joe line five. Also calling from WABC. We had two Joes. No waiting. Uh, let's go to this. Joe, how are you? And talk to me about millennials. Why are they looking to Trump as uh, as a potential candidate as a, a potential president? Uh, hello, Brian. Uh- I was speaking with uh, my son. I have three three sons who are millennials in age, and they branch out. They have a lot of friends. They they just uh, they're supporting Trump, not not because they're so politically astute or uh, Republican or Democrat, but they like winners. That generation likes winners, and like they like to know that someone who's made it will also says you can make it too. And uh, basically, uh, he's the strong horse for them. Uh, that's what I found from just talking to them. Um, I- so, Does the immigration uh, thing resonate with them as well, or no? Yeah, the immigration does. I'll tell you how that resonates, because based on the trades. If you're increasing, for example, the uh, minimum wage, you're going to push the trades and, and uh, a lot of employees to, to hire uh, the illegals, and that's a problem, too. They don't like the competition from them. Uh, uh, there is a lot of competition, Joe. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. We've got to get to a break here, but you're right. Uh, we keep... We're, we're, we're told constantly, they take the jobs Americans don't want. No, don't tell me that. There are some great jobs out there that they have that we would like. It is Brian Sussman on this, The Savage Nation. Dr. Savage is off. Brian Sussman is in, filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Uh, you're going to hear our morning conversation with Michael in just a few minutes, he was on my morning show in San Francisco this morning. Of course, that's his hometown. And it was rather hilarious. You'll hear that momentarily. We were just talking about minimum wage because Hillary's out on the stump this morning talking about minimum wage, got to raise it to 15 bucks. A lot of you folks are business owners. You understand how, how the world operates. But there is one dir- deep, dark, dirty little secret regarding minimum wage. And Matt is calling from WJR. Matt, thanks for checking in. You are spot on. I want you to share what you know here. Uh, yeah, one of the big beneficiaries of the uh, increase in the minimum wage, if it goes through, is unions because their pay, pay scale is indexed to the minimum wage. So when minimum wage goes up, their pay, their pay automatically goes up. Absolutely, and that's why the unions are always backing these minimum wage hikes in various cities around the country, states, and now this federal plan this is Hillary's way of getting the unions in her back pocket as she runs for president, correct? That's correct. Matt, way to go. Good call. Now, regarding minimum wage, here is Sean. He's down Georgia way, WMAC. Sean, go right ahead. I think you're going to speak to the free market aspect of minimum wage. Thanks for calling. Thank you, Brian. Absolutely. I just, I'm not an economist, but to me it's painfully obvious, and I just wanted to remind the listeners that minimum wage is supposed to be just that, a minimum wage. If you work hard, you have a good work ethic, you do your job right, you're not supposed to stay at minimum wage. The free market system and capitalism 
is supposed to work where you do earn a good living for your family. It's not supposed to be the job of Hillary and the government to make sure that we just get the bare minimum all the time. And this is probably one of the reasons when you see the employment numbers, Sean, you always see how many people are out of the workforce, eligible workers out of the workforce. This includes a lot of young people who would be in high school, college age. They can't get those minimum wage jobs because where the minimum wage has been artificially increased, guess what? You know, they've pretty much been uh, boxed out, haven't they? Pretty much. I mean, and it's frustrating because the employers can't afford to hire multiple people because the minimum wage is going up. Mm -hmm. But then you're also having jobs taken by older people who have been displaced from their higher earning jobs and they're having to take the new minimum wage job. So it's just a vicious cycle. And it's, you know, Sean, you may not be an economist, but man, you sure get it. And that's what America was, was, uh, you know, created upon just the idea that we understand how to connect the dots with money. Uh, Warner is it, uh, it calling from WMAL Warner, go ahead quickly, please on the savage nation. You're a small business owner. I understand. Yes, I just wanted to push back on that one Nobel economist they called in earlier. The reality is I don't have any (laughs) more money for salaries. And so if I have to uh, double, right, the minimum wage, his hours go from 40 to 20. There is no new money, right? It's the same Mm -hmm. expenditures in total, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happens when I'm only open 20 hours a week versus 40, that means my sales go down as well. It's a death spiral for small businesses. Yep. You get it, Warner. Thanks for calling on this, the Savage Nation. So uh, I've got a program in San Francisco. It's a morning show. I do it with uh, my beautiful co-host, Katie Green. And we have a good time on that show, 5 to 9 a.m. Occasionally, Michael calls in, and we love it when he calls. So that was the case this morning, and he just wanted to let uh, our morning audience know he wasn't going to be on his program this afternoon. Wanted to let everybody know I was filling in. And the conversation went from there. Here's what it sounded like this morning. Our favorite guest, the doctor, is making a house call. Dr. Michael Savage joins us right now on KSFO. Good morning, Mike. How you doing? Well, the reason I'm joining you is because I'm not going to be on my show today. Thankfully, you can fill in for me. I, I called to tell the audience why I'm not on, because I know your, your audience is about the same as mine. There's a lot of overlap. They have nowhere else mm-hmm. to go in the sick bay area. I have to tell everyone why I'm not on. It's not that profound. I am not sick. I am not on vacation. I am not enjoying myself. I've been working since 6 in the morning, as usual, not complaining. Thank God I have the ability to do so. The picture that they used for my new book, Government Zero, was no good. I rejected it last week. They photoshopped and they gave me the clothing of a dead, a dead man, and they put a beret on me. I said, okay, the art director works for Obama. This is sick. They send a picture of me with a beret on my head. They photoshopped the beret on my head. The shirt and suit didn't fit me. It looked, remember, I, I did a story, Dead Man's Pants, when I was a kid. I wore old clothes from Dead Men. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they gave me Dead that. Man's clothing. Oh, my God. So I said, no, get your photographer out of here. And I warned them. I don't look as good as I did last year. I'm like the portrait of Dorian Gray coming older every year, like everyone who's living. <laughs> I said, why are you taking another picture of me there? Are great pictures out there? Oh, no, we need a new picture. So that's one thing. Number two, I'm doing a dog book about Teddy and me. So the photographer's a famous dog photographer, thank God. And Teddy doesn't need a new suit. God gave him a gray suit when he was born and a pair of black shoes. And they're the same shoes, and they work fine 11 years later. So it's going to be Teddy and I in a restaurant eating, you know, that kind of stuff, talking, driving around. So it's, it's all photography all day, guys. Now, yeah. Dr. Savage, as long as I've got you on the program, I need to get I need to get some snapshots of your views on a few of the stories of the day. Do you have time for that? Oh, please. Please. Okay, I, I'm so, having nightmares about Obama. There's a picture of him from the Washington Examiner showing the real evil mean man he is instead of the little smiley face from Honolulu. Look at it, michaelsavage.com. I'm, I'm on your website right now. In fact, I'm, I'm there as we speak. I'm, I'm, right oh, the yeah. Side. No, I was going to ask you about this story. This is amazing. How does this guy, he's a, a Muslim professor, hates Jews, uh, women, gays. He He's not going to lose his job. If no, this were just a white man, just a, just your basic white American doing the same things. My I'm God, that'd be over. How does he keep his job? I, I think the question should be, why has he not been made the university president for being so brave? 
I okay, mean, it's so crazy. That's... The country's upside down. Barack Obama has destroyed America. I don't know if we ever recover from the social upheaval that this psychopath is causing. Another story. This is another friend of Obama. This is Bo Bergdahl. He's swept up in a Mendocino County raid uh, on a pot thing. farm. On a pot farm. Yeah, this but... guy's being charged with desertion. He leaves the base, and yeah, he's well, at he's some friend's warrior. house where remember. there's a pot farm. No, according to Obama, he's a war hero. So he's covered and protected by Jay Johnson of DHS, the Wall yeah, Street yeah. lawyer that they made the head of the Department of Homeland Security. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The man who allowed the Boston Marathon bombing to occur, the man that allowed one terrorist event there. Failed us on every level. Never mm-hmm. lost his job. No hearings from the ballless Republican losers mm-hmm. who hate Donald Trump for saying mm-hmm. what everyone wants to hear. Exactly. Trump, okay, though. now, here's one more. As long as you're on this, I've got a couple more for you, Michael. Here's another one. I, I want to get your take on this. The House passes this bill to punish sanctuary cities in the wake of the Kate Steinle killing. Well, right. where has Congress been all this time, Michael? These sanctuary cities have been in place for years. People have been killed, raped, God knows what, and the House just finally notices? I think we need to hold any twosome newsome responsible for it. We have that great soundbite of him boasting about how proud he is of it being a sanctuary city. He's going to be run for something, isn't he? What's he running for now, Tusum? Well, he's going to run for governor, and then he's going to run for president someday. Oh, please. Any Tusum Newsom? What's his claim to fame? He's a nice guy. He's got a beautiful family. Why doesn't he get a legitimate job? I don't understand it. Why doesn't he leave politics and make a real living, an honest living, rather? He can make a killing in the private sector. I'm sure he's well-connected. Nice guy, well-connected, connected to the Gettys, right? Mm-hmm. The guy could do well own, owning a chain of bars and restaurants. So, I don't, look, it's, you know, all we can do, guys, I swear to God, we are in such a sad state as a nation. Never mind the cattle walking in the street, mooing around, don't even know what country they live in, nor do they care. Stuffing faces with rolls of fat off their waist, hanging down. Mm, America. <laughs> Love America. 90, how many millions of people don't work, don't pay income tax? Right, right, right. 47 or 49 percent of the people in this country, adults, do not pay any federal income tax. Think about that. And he's bringing in millions of illegals who will pay no income tax. Mm-hmm. This work, how does a country even survive? So where, do, where does this end? I'm having nightmares at night. You want to hear my last statement, guys? Here's yes. a nightmare. You're going to get it fresh. You know how we're all screaming for voter ID? How they're just ushering people in? You know, Mexico yeah. requires five different forms of identification to vote. You know that. You know what yeah, they it's... do to illegals who come across the border from Guatemala oh, yeah. and Mexico. They really yeah. preserve their borders, language, and culture, and they dump their flotsam on our shores. The, the undesirables that they don't want, they send over to this stupid country. Nevertheless, we're all screaming for voter ID, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what's happening. The federal government is maneuvering us into demanding photo ID, government ID, 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 ID. Eventually, Mm -hmm. they're going to say, you know what? People are right. We want all citizens of America to have a federal identification, not just the illegals. You get it? And then they're Mm going to give us a little card produced by them, which will have the old electronic chip in the card. Right. They'll track us 24-7 with this card. Yep, yep. We're going to demand you'll have it. to have That's your card on you at all time. That's right, and if you don't have it, you'll be arrested and deported. Mm-hmm. And a nightmare that we could wind up being illegitimate in our own country. And you say, oh, well, he's paranoid. Yeah, okay, I'm paranoid, right. That's why I've survived 21 years in radio and written uh, 30 bestsellers, because mm-hmm. I'm crazy. And all the losers sitting in the cafes here in San Francisco, they're the geniuses, the SDSI crazy check people. I have to get your take on this. The one photograph that got our attention right off the bat this morning, Obama's visiting Kenya, and there are billboards all over the country saying, Welcome home, Mr. President. (laughs) What could be better? (laughs) My only hope is that he loves it so much he stays there. (laughs) You know, there's an old book written by Thomas Wolf called You Can't Go Home Again. Maybe that'll work for us, and he'll be barred from reentry because he doesn't have legitimate papers. Oh, God. <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> love it. <laughs> Okay, good, good. For having me on, have a great afternoon. I don't know how you do five and three, impossible. Listen, it's going to be fun filling in for you. You know it always is. Michael, have a great day, okay? Just uh, take it easy, take the photographs, have fun with Teddy, eat well, drink well, and have a nice weekend. Living well is the best revenge. Thanks for having me on. Uh, that was Michael Savage on my program this morning in San Francisco. Only this <laughs> show... The show gets a little ribald. I'm on the air with my my sidekick, Katie Green. <laughs> I noticed there were two things edited out of that <laughs> segment. One was something I said about our lieutenant governor who wants to be governor, which is probably a good thing it was edited out. And then the other part of it was <laughs> when, <laughs> when <laughs> Savage forgot where he was, and <laughs> he used a word you're not supposed to say on the radio, which we did catch live. But uh, otherwise, that was just a real a real pleasure. So here we are, Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation. Got a lot of callers who are going to be checking in momentarily. So callers, please stay on hold. I appreciate that. You know, Savage, did you hear him talking about that government ID thing just a moment ago? I'm sure you did. I'm kind of wondering if that's going to be in his next book, Government Zero, because he's going to be sounding the alarm how these leftists and these radical Islamists are working towards a similar end to destroy Western civilization and remake it in their own respective images. It's, I believe that's what Barack Obama was talking about when he talks about the transformation of America and the refugees he's bringing to this country. He's not bringing Christian refugees. He's not bringing in the Yazidis. He's not bringing in the Christians. He's bringing in Muslim refugees. And they have no, no intention of assimilation. But you've got to wonder... This, this socialist, third-world dictatorship ruled by government zero. Absolute government, zero rep- representation in his next book. You've got to wonder if he's going to be talking about this government ID system that he just described in the book. We'll talk about it. And by the way, you can find out more. Just go to michaelsavage.com. This is Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage, the Savage Nation. So we've been talking about a number of topics, but the topic that keeps coming up, the subject, the person that keeps popping up, and we've been on the air for almost two hours now filling in for Michael, is Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Uh, it's interesting because we just played that particular song leading into this segment. Joe checks in. Joe's listening online. Joe, go right ahead. Your comments, please. Oh, uh, Ryan, thanks for taking my call. You know, guess who said you know, America doesn't like losers? Uh, General George S. Patton, that's who, same as Donald Trump. The comparison between the two is really uncanny. They both have larger-than-life personalities. They're mm-hmm. take-charge type of people. They don't care what the crowd thinks. They're in, they're, they can str- uh, leave the crowd, strike out on their own. They're uh, enormously confident, and they're both enormously successful in what they do. So I think Donald Trump is a George S. Patton of American politics. I, I would agree with you, Joe. That's a great analogy. Thanks for checking in on this, the Savage Nation. See, the problem is these politicians don't have any intestinal fortitude. In fact, that here, here's Will at WMAL. Will, go right ahead. I took the words out of your mouth, didn't I? Yes, sir. Yes, you did. Did we lose him? Will has left the building. Okay. Well, they don't have any intestinal fortitude. Or how about this? How about this? They don't have any testicular fortitude. That might be. I'm talking about the women as well who are politicians. Now, this is so true. So true. Uh, the number 855 400 Seven two eight two eight five five four hundred Savage MichaelSavage.com. That's where you can see all the news of the day. You can still get the book Countdown to Mecca. Hey, it's summertime. You need a summer read? Might I recommend? Okay, we're gonna get back into it. You're gonna hear Trump taking on the media. This was beautiful. Take it on Telemundo. 
with that Trump bravado. Brian Sussman filling in on this, The Savage Nation. Warning, The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Brian Sussman, very, very honored to be filling in for Dr. Michael Savage on this, The Savage Nation, 855-400-SAVAGE. Now, this is interesting. The Obama administration is preparing to release convicted Israeli spy Jonathan Pollard. Huh. This is interesting. This is a move that would end a decades-long fight over Pollard, who was arrested on charges of spying for Israel in 1985 and sentenced to life in prison. And the case has long been a source of tension between the United States and Israel. Israel has argued that a life sentence for spying on behalf of a close U.S. partner is too harsh. And for decades now, Israel has sought Pollard's release, only to be rejected by the United States. So what's going on here? Now some U.S. officials are pushing for Pollard's release in a matter of weeks. Others say, well, it's going to take months, possibly until his parole consideration in November. November. Some U.S. officials strongly deny, as of today, there's any link between, are you ready for this, the Iran deal and Pollard's prospective release. That's what this is all about, in my opinion. Israel hates this Iran deal for good reason, because it's a bad deal. And so this is a way that the Obama administration can try curry favor with the Israelis who don't like this deal. And why don't they like this deal? Can I just read for you something from the Jerusalem Post that the boys were able to put together for me, the producers of the Savage Nation? This This is it. So there is a video. You ready for this, folks? There's a video threatening that the safety of Israel will not be ensured despite the nuclear deal signed between World Powers in Tehran last week was released on the official YouTube page of the Iranian Supreme Leader. So this is the Iranian Supreme Leader. This isn't some some lackey. This is the head mullah in Iran. The mullahs run this show in Iran. So this guy has a video. It's on his official YouTube page. The video begins. Now, please listen to this. You need to understand. This deal that Obama and Kerry brokered is a crap sandwich. There's nothing, it's beyond that. It's just, it's all crap. There's nothing good in the bill. There's nothing in the deal. Nothing. Nothing. The video begins with a clip of the United States President Barack Obama, or if you will, the man currently occupying the White House, ensuring that the U.S., quote, and these are the words out of Obama's mouth, quote, The U.S. will continue our unprecedented efforts to strengthen Israel's security. This is what Obama says. Obama's out there saying, listen, don't worry about this deal. Quote, the U.S. will continue our unprecedented efforts to strengthen Israel's security. That's the first thing on Supreme Leader Ayatollah al-Khamenei's video. That's the first thing you see. Obama, hey, Israel's cool. Then there's a montage of Iranian missiles blowing up, accompanied by a voiceover from a speech by the Ayatollah, in which he declares Israel's security will not be ensured whether Israel's security will not be ensured whether there will be a nuclear agreement or not. That's what Khomeini says. So in other words, picture it, use your mind. You have explosions on screen. Things are getting blown to smithereens. And then the Ayatollah's voice, Israel's security will not be ensured whether there will be a nuclear agreement or not. Starts out with Obama saying, hey, 
We've got Israel's back. Then explosions. And then Khomeini saying, Israel, be on guard. Deal or no deal, we're going after you. That's why the Israelis don't like this deal. They weren't at the table. Iran's their biggest enemy. They weren't at the table. There was no negotiation with Iran or with Israel in this deal with Iran. None. Nothing. 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 So now the Obama administration is preparing to release convicted Israeli spy Jonathan Pollard. Why? It would only make sense that they're doing this to soothe things over with Israel. Come on, folks. Wake up and smell the coffee here. If their lips are moving, they're lying to you. That's Obama. That's the the deal. The deal. The deal which sucks. How badly does it suck? Well, here's, here's Bob Corker, senator, to John Kerry. Secretary of State, saying, you, sir, have been fleeced. This is cut, let me see, I think it's cut 14, go. But what I think you've actually done in these negotiations is codify a perfectly aligned pathway for Iran to get a nuclear weapon just by abiding by this agreement. I look at the things that they need to do, the way it's laid out, and I don't think you could more perfectly lay it out. From my perspective, Mr. Secretary, um, I'm sorry. I believe you've been fleeced. In the process of being fleeced, what you've really done here is you have turned Iran from being a pariah to now Congress being a pariah. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Senator Bob Corker, listen to clip teen. He goes on to say, not only were you fleeced, you were bamboozled. Clip 16. If you were bamboozled, the world has been bamboozled. That's ridiculous. And it's unfair. And it's wrong. You can disagree for sure with aspects of this agreement. But I think we need to stay away from that kind of rhetoric. Uh, Well, I'll tell you something. You were bamboozled, sure. Guys, help me out. Who was that last person speaking? From my notes. Oh, that was Barbara Boxer. Okay, gotcha. Barbara Boxer. If you were bamboozled, the whole world has been bamboozled. That is ridiculous, unfair, it's wrong. You can disagree with aspects of this agreement, but I think we need to stay away from that kind of rhetoric. Why? You were bamboozled. You hear the rhetoric, Barbara Boxer? Thanks for clarifying that, guys. You hear the rhetoric that uh, Khomeini's using? The head Ayatollah? He's got a YouTube channel. Bombs bursting, things blowing up. And then the rhetoric he uses is, ha, Israel, deal or no deal, we've got you in our crosshairs. What kind of rhetoric is that, Barbara Boxer? Have you seen the rhetoric that these people use? They're exporters of terror. They blow people up. They blow people up. And they're backing those who chop heads off. And they're backing those who imprison and enslave young girls and women. What's that ideology like, Barbara Boxer? What kind of rhetoric is that? Give me a break. I'm embarrassed to say she's my senator. So this is where the British prime minister gets it right. He says, no, it's not ideology. Excuse me. It's not poverty. It's not global warming. It's ideology. It's an ideology. Listen to this. This is clip 18, the British prime minister speaking in no uncertain terms regarding radical Islam, fundamental Islam, whatever you want to call it. Listen to clip 18. When they say these are wronged Muslims getting revenge on their Western wrongdoers, let us remind them from Kosovo to Somalia, countries like Britain have stepped in to save Muslim people from massacres. It is groups like ISIL, Al Qaeda and Boko Haram that are the ones murdering Muslims. You know, it's amazing, isn't it? You still get people who don't understand how vicious and violent and how determined this enemy is. We have, what, 57 Muslim countries in the world? Do you think they've always been Muslim countries? No, no, no. They were taken over at the point of the sword. Convert or perish, your choice. What do you want to do, convert or perish? That's how they all became the countries they are today over a period of time. This ideology, as the British Prime Minister rightly calls it, is long-suffering. In the United States of America, we have this quarterly mentality based upon corporate earnings. How's it going to be next quarter? What's going on the following quarter? 
the, the Muslim world looks at quarter of centuries or quarter of millennia. They, they, they're long-suffering. They're looking out there, global domination, Muslim style. If it takes 500 years, we're there. Slowly but surely, death by a thousand cuts. This is what they do. Listen to the British Prime Minister. This is clip 19. Clip 19. Now, others might say it's because terrorists are driven to their actions by poverty. But that ignores the fact that many of these terrorists have had the full advantages of prosperous families or a Western university education. They have. They're very, you look at their, their pedigrees, engineers, medical doctors, etc. He continues, listen to this next clip from the British Prime Minister on this ideology being the root cause of Islamist terrorism. Now let me be clear, I'm not saying these issues aren't important, but we mustn't delude ourselves. We could deal with all of these issues, and some people in our country and elsewhere would still be drawn to Islamist extremism. But we must be clear, the root cause of the threat we face is the extremist ideology itself. Barbara is calling from WDRC. Barbara, you want to talk about this Iran deal. I've heard about this. I haven't read it, but I've heard about this as well. Please share with the Savage Nation. Go ahead. Barbara Boxer failed to uh, mention that in this agreement, uh, it should be called a treaty, but if they call it agreement, then the Congress doesn't really have any control. We have no control. Um, they, this agreement says that the United States promises to protect Iran if they are attacked by anyone. Uh, why we would protect someone that has been our enemy for so long that wants to kill us is beyond me. And there's so many more things in this agreement. I, I can't imagine what they are. But, of course, this is like every other document that's generated from this administration. Nobody knows what's in it. We just have little dribs and drabs from these liars, these liars that are, have uh, infiltrated. Our whole State Department is infiltrated by Muslim Brotherhood. They're the ones that are driving this policy along with Valerie Jarrett, who is Iranian. Barbara, thanks for your call on this, the Savage Nation. Valerie Jarrett does have uh, an Iranian background, for sure. Uh, what else is going on here? You know, you watch what this administration is doing, and a rational person, at least for a moment, has to wonder this. What team are these people on? I know what I'm on. Team Savage, Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage on this, the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage, the Savage Nation. Uh, go to michaelsavage.com. You can still get the book Countdown to Mecca. Isn't it interesting? Countdown to Mecca. I ended the last segment by saying a rational person, at least for a moment, has to wonder what team Barack Obama and the administration are on. We're looking at the Iran deal. We find out that, uh, indeed, we're trying to perhaps curry favor with Israel by releasing Pollard, the Israeli spy, the prisoner that Israel's been... Israel's been trying to get released from the United States for years. Now we're finally doing it. Is that because this Iran deal is so bad and Israel knows it? We want to just, you know, extend a little olive branch. But listen to this. Now you've got Je Johnson, the president's head of the Department of Homeland Security, the guy who has no security background whatsoever. Do you realize he has actually come out saying it's, it's wrong to describe ISIS as being Islamic. You can't call it Islamic terrorism. That's wrong. You can't do that. That's that's offensive. You can't call it Islamic terrorism? Again, I ask you, what team are these guys on? What are we supposed to call it? If you looked at any one of those thugs, ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, the leaders of Iran, 
the lead, you got 57 Muslim countries. Look at people within leadership, probably within all those countries. People within the leadership structure of all those countries. And, and, and these are, in many cases, radicals who want to take over the world with their ideology. And they have no problem with what's going on at the hands of ISIS and Boko Haram and Al-Qaeda. These, they're, they're spread out all over the world. Some are in this country. We know that because we see them signing up to go to work for ISIS. Tell them they're not. Um, tell them that they're not Islamic. Tell them that they're not members of the religion of peace. Tell them that. Oh, they'll lop your head off in the name of Allah. This is amazing what's happening here. Let's continue on the Savage Nation, shall we? Uh, This is Kent, WBAP, Fort Worth. We were talking about Valerie Jarrett and her ties to Iran. And, of course, she may actually, Kent, be the real president of the United States because in every photograph I ever see of Obama, she's somewhere in the background. Go right ahead, Kent. Hi, Brian. Uh, thanks for taking my call today. I was just kind of jumping off of that last caller's comments, and uh, I wanted to also point out that Valerie Jarrett, her grandfather, Robert Taylor, and uh, her father-in-law, Vernon Jarrett, they have their communist card number in their FBI files from back in the 30s and 40s, and so do they have the, the same information on this Frank Marshall Davis, who was a uh, a mentor of Barack Obama in Hawaii, and it all stemmed. I can't figure out why, but it all goes back to Chicago. Well, these people all have the Chicago background, and by the way, Barack Obama, it's true, uh, Davis was his mentor, uh, and he actually admitted that on camera. It's something from, I believe, 1995, where you hear him talk about his mentor, um, and uh, that's... I mean, I don't know what else to say. Thanks for your call. It gets disturbing to think about the fact that this is the gaggle of goons currently in charge of the United States of America. Savage Nation, Brian Sussman. Proud to be filling in. We'll take more of your calls in the final half hour of the program. Again, the phone number, 855-400-SAVAGE, michaelsavage.com. Brian Sussman filling in for Dr. Michael Savage on this, the Savage Nation. There was, this morning on my morning show in San Francisco on KSFO, uh, Savage came on as a guest, and we were talking about me filling in on his program this afternoon, and it was, you heard about eight minutes of our discussion. It was about a 15-minute interview, and it was really a fun interview, as our times with Michael always are. But he talked about a nightmare he's been having lately, and it has to do with a, a day perhaps not too far in the future in his dream where we're forced to get a voter ID card, you know, because listen, we, we all believe we need voter ID, right? I mean, I think a rational individual would say, yeah, we need voter ID. I mean, they have voter ID in Mexico to vote for crying out loud. Uh, so voter ID, but the left will seize upon this. So, you know, those righties, they all want this voter ID. Well, this could be our ticket for a national ID card complete with a microchip that you will have to carry at all times. We'll do this in the name of security and and welfare, etc. And this will be a good thing from America. And this will be everything conservatives have never wanted. But something Big Brother has always pined for. And I just got to wonder if this theme is going to make it into Savage's new book, which is going to be coming out in October. It's called Government Zero. Absolute government control and zero representation government zero margaret is checking in from wabc margaret i'm not sure if you were listening to the conversation with michael savage earlier or not but i know you want to say something about microchips correct oh yeah i heard you know a small clip about you know my phone kept going in and out because i listened to wabc on the app and i heard some of it that you know about the cards that were gonna might be mandatory or something. Mm-hmm. Now I had heard from, you know, sources and friends about a microchip, and I volunteered at the VA, and somebody within there, no names mentioned, uh, said that we will be chipped at one point, and that really scares me. Well, we already we already chipped dogs. We already chipped dogs. 
And we see how that works. You know, if you lose a dog, the dog's got the chip. You can find out who the owner is, etc. cetera. Uh, with all of the missing kids and all the crazy people out there that are kidnapping kids, etc., and all the perverts coming in from south of the border and, and even homegrown, uh, you could see how parents would say, well, we need to chip the children. We just That way we can ch- keep track of where they are at all times. I mean, Margaret, did you ever think you would live in the United States of America where Virtually on every street corner now, there's a security camera. Crazy. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that would be unthinkable. I know. It's very scary. This, this is I, where we're I, going, and everyone's going to say, well, it's for the general welfare. Of course we have to do this. Of course we have to do this. See, that's why, Margaret, thanks for your call. That's why our founders said that without pillars of morality and virtue, you can't have this kind of government. Well, we're our morality is being pulled out from under us via the schools and our virtue? What? You got Planned Parenthood. The most gruesome, ghoulish, demonic organization in the history of the world. You think ISIS is bad? How many people have uh, have uh, Planned Parenthood put out of commission? Let's continue here. We will go to, oh, yes, Santos in San Francisco calling KSFO style. We were talking about Hillary's server earlier in the program. And now John Boehner's out there, Santos, saying, oh, I demand this, the server. John, where were you in March when this whole story broke? Anyway, Santos, go ahead. Hi, yes, sir. Uh, Brian, this is uh, Santos and in San Francisco. Um, over the last... I've been in, in and out of the government for 35 years, um, and I've worked with Department of State. I've worked with uh, DHS, you name it, all 64 interagency players. And one salient point is that no matter what level of in, uh, information you process and handle, uh, every year you have to take mandatory courses that discuss the handling of unclassified and classified information. And this is um, this is mandatory for every employee, and for soldiers, you name it, for contractors. Uh, Snowden had to take the same training, and she's claiming that uh, nothing was on her server that was important. Right. And yet she was doing business on her server, a government business. And one of the points they make in the training is that uh, one piece of information is not bad unclassified, but when you put together this mosaic of thousands and thousands of uh, pieces of information, it creates, in many cases, a classified picture. And so somebody tapping into her server, and of course OPM just recently got tapped into, Mm -hmm. uh, which is horrendous for all of us. Right. Right. Uh, Office of Personnel Management. All these millions and millions of people who have worked for the government or applied for work for the government had their identities compromised. So if you can get into the OPM database, how much easier to hack into her little database, so to speak, at Chappaqua, New York, at her house? And that's where she, as the Secretary of State, uh, our, our allies, enemies, you name it, they are trying to figure out our patterns. Sure. She, she created through this mosaic a, a pattern. And on top of that, every employee, and having worked at some of the higher levels of government, mm-hmm. we all have to sign these statements saying that we understand the training, and then at the bottom of it, it gives a number of U.S. codes that we will be prosecuted under, if we if we foul this up, so clearly she never had the training and she never signed the document. And on top of that, she had to sign at least a dozen non-disclosure statements uh, in in her position. I, and I'm sure you know these people are lawyered up to the hilt. Anything she would sign has been passed by all of her lawyers, and her lawyers probably said, "Listen, plead ignorance. Don't sign it, Hillary. Just go about your business." And she was never pressed by the administration to probably sign those things. I'm just guessing. But you're exactly right, Santos, and thanks for your call on the Savage Nation. So now we find out that Hillary could be facing a criminal investigation. This is due to uh, two inspectors general requesting that the Department of Justice launch into such a probe. But hello, it's the Department of Justice. They're not going to go into any probe. It's just like those who are asking for a probe of the Planned Parenthood 
selling a body part story. You know how my Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi spins it? No, we need to investigate the guys who were uh, doing this uh, investigation. What? That's what we're dealing with here. These people are crazy. Now here's our crazy president who's currently back home in Kenya. Well, that's what the billboards say. Welcome home, Mr. President. Guys, play clip three. Here he is talking about gun control. Clip three. If you ask me where has been the the, the one area where I feel that uh, I've been most frustrated and most stymied, uh, it is the fact that uh, the United States of America is the one advanced nation on earth in which we do not have sufficient common sense gun safety laws, uh, even in the face of repeated uh, mass killings. You know that mass killing yesterday at the theater in Louisiana? It was another one of these gun-free zones. There are two places that are completely unsafe in the United States. Well, there are two places in the United States that are very unsafe. One, gun-free zones. Two, the womb. Thanks to Planned Parenthood. Let's go to Gabriel. Gabriel's out in California. Gabriel, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Go right ahead. How you doing, Mr. Sutton? Um, so I'm an eight-year military vet. I have uh, I have PTSD, and uh, the president talks about being frustrated. I don't carry a gun because I know what's going on in my head. But every time there's these shootings, either yesterday in Louisiana, Connecticut, Colorado, uh, South Carolina, every time they dig into the story, every single person has a mental issue. Now, who approves these people to actually buy the guns? I mean, don't you have to go through a process? And if the president's frustrated about all this stuff, he needs to look at his own government who's authorizing these people to get these guns. Well, yeah, listen, Gabriel, first of all, thanks for your service, and I, I wish you the best of health. And thanks for calling in. And, uh, you know, you're a reasonable guy. Uh, so many times these guns are stolen. You know, the crazy people are using these guns, stole the guns, uh, took them from a family member or whatnot. But so many times these guys are on various psychotropic drugs. And again, they're selecting these gun free zones. And oftentimes these how, how many crimes every day are stopped? How many crimes every day? I love the National Rifle Association, uh, various publications, because in one of the magazines I receive from the NRA every month, they've got all of these stories. From, I mean, just news stories that they've been able to pull and place in their magazine about people who stopped a crime because they had a gun. It happens every day. Most of the time, we don't even hear about it. These, these cowardly criminals, if they see you have a firearm, they turn tail and run like that. Some decide to act stupidly, and gunfights ensue, and the bad guys take in the shorts a, a, a lot of the time. Crimes are stopped before they're committed because people own guns. If you're going to have a country that's founded upon life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and this country is, I know Barack Obama's trying to change that, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. Read, do a little detailed study on your own of the phrase pursuit of happiness. It has to do with your right to own property. Your right to own property. That property is not only your physical property, but the property between your ears. Now, how do you protect your property? If you're entitled to the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, how do you protect your property? How do you do that? Oh, that's why we have the police. Well, great. When the bad guy breaks into your house, go ahead and call 911. That's a great thing. And our police will respond as quickly as they can. But guess what? If you have friends named Smith and Wesson, you'll be able to respond a lot quicker. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness requires that you be able to defend yourself and your property. That's what they want to take away from us. And all of these gun laws, at the end of the day, listen, Barack Obama, there's a gentleman I've had the pleasure of spending some time with, John Lott. He's written some tremendous books on uh, how gun control is dangerous. I think one of his best books is um, Less Guns, More Crime. John Lott is an economist by trade. 
but he's written all these books about guns. He used to teach at the University of Chicago. He was on the faculty at the University of Chicago, full-time faculty. He was there when Barack Obama was brought in to be a guest lecturer, not even an adjunct professor, professor, not a professor, a guest lecturer. He was there at the time when Barack Obama was brought in. He has shared with me and my audience on KSFO numerous times the story of how he approached Barack Obama and said, Hey, uh, Barack Obama, how are you? This before Barack Obama was even politics. Hey, Barack Obama, how you doing? My name's John Lott. There was a quick interchange, and Barack Obama said, Oh, John Lott, you're the gun guy. Because John had written all these books on guns. You're the gun guy. And John said, Well, yeah, I guess I am. And Barack Obama said to him, and this is a direct quote from John Lott, Barack Obama said, I don't believe anyone has the right to own a gun. And he turned around and walked away. That was it. See, that was Barack Obama in the 90s. I don't believe anybody has the right to own a gun. Now, do you think he's changed since then? <laughs> no. He's president of the United States, and that's why you just heard that clip from Barack Obama where he said the one area where he feels he has been most frustrated and stymied is the fact that the United States, well, because he hasn't been able to shut down guns in this country. That's what I'm talking about, and that's what the left wants to do. They want to take, if they, if they had their way, they'd take them away. Oh, they look to other countries. Well, I've look, at, um, look at this particular country. You can own a gun. All you have to do is keep it at the police station, whatever you want it, to go to the uh, sh shooting range or to go to hunt. You can collect it from them. Oh, that's great. That's really great. Brian Sussman filling in on this, the Savage Nation. We're going to take a bunch of calls to close out the show. We are going to hear from the Savage Nation next. This is... Brian Sussman filling in for Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. The callers on the Savage Nation, Brian Sussman filling in for Michael. Let's go to, we were just talking about gun control and Obama's insatiable lust for getting rid of our guns. This is Tim in Vegas, KBET. Tim, go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Playing in Chicago every week, and the president doesn't talk about this ever. And secondly, when it comes Wait, to... Tim, Tim, just to reset, Tim, just to reset, you said there are mass killings in Chicago every week, and yet Obama says nothing, Right count in Chicago every week in the black community, and he doesn't say a word. It's, it's gun violence that's destroying the black community that he claims to care about, and he says nothing. And when it comes to Planned Parenthood, you know, if somebody, the, the way these demonic, ideological, drunk people think about things, if somebody had a video camera in Nazi Germany and took video of the concentration camps, they would want to take the videographer to court. They would want to prosecute the camera operator. And oh, yeah. Well, that's like Pelosi right now. She's saying we need to invest investigate the people that were operating the camera. Oh, shut up, Nancy. Come on. Tim, thanks for your call. I want to get to as many callers as we can in our remaining moments here. Jackie, WJR. Jackie, thanks for calling the Savage Nation. Yeah, you know, I just find it a little bit ironic that he gives one more yet one more speech on gun control yesterday, and not that hours later we have yet another movie theater shooting. And not only do we have another shooting, but this time we have a man who took his own life that cannot even testify. So we really don't know what was oh, going on. In and, and it's even worse. It was another shooting in a gun-free zone. Jackie, thanks for your call. MichaelSavage.com for all of your news on this Friday, Friday evening over the weekend. You can still get his book, Countdown to Mecca. Don't forget the new book coming out, Ground Zero, in October. Brian Sussman, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. Government Zero, excuse me, Government Zero, coming out in October. Always a pleasure to speak to this audience, the Savage Nation. Brian Sussman filling in.